Welcome to richplanet.net, the program which aims to uncover the truth behind the alien and UFO mystery. I'm Richard D. Hall, and this week's program is about alien ancestors. If aliens are visiting Earth at the present time, as many people now believe, then it seems logical that they may have visited Earth in the past. Not only that, some claim that extraterrestrials have played a role in our evolution, and our DNA was hybridized in the past to create Homo sapien. This is a view that deeply religious people and anthropologists find impossible to consider because it threatens to destroy the foundation upon which their entire belief system is based. Before we look at theories about aliens, I'm going to look at a few things in our past that historians cannot explain, which indicate that advanced intelligent species, not necessarily alien, inhabited the Earth over 10,000 years ago. Conventional history upholds that we were still in the Stone Age 10,000 years ago. The first piece of evidence is the Piri Reis map. In 1929, a group of historians found a map drawn on a gazelle skin. Research showed that this was a genuine document drawn in 1513 by Piri Reis, a famous admiral of the Turkish fleet in the 16th century. Piri Reis had privileged access to the Imperial Library of Constantinople, and in a series of notes on the map, he states that he copied the map from a large number of source maps, some of which dated back to the 4th century BC or earlier. These source maps no longer exist. The map is extremely accurate and shows the western coast of Africa, the eastern coast of South America, and the northern coast of Antarctica. The map shows the northern Antarctic coastline in perfect detail, 300 years before it was discovered in 1818. Not only that, the coastline is currently underneath one mile of ice. It was only in 1949 that seismic surveys were carried out on Antarctica and the first maps of the land underneath were produced. The Piri Reis map matches the modern maps exactly. The question then arises, when was the Antarctic coastline free of ice? There are some doubts about the exact time, but researchers claim anything between 13,000 and 9,000 BC, which is well into the Stone Age. Before the 1700s, maps were extremely inaccurate because navigators had no way of knowing how far around the, the Earth, east or west, they had traveled. They knew how far north or south they were by the position of the stars, but the only way of working out how far east or west you have traveled is by having an accurate way of measuring the time. It wasn't until 1735 that the first chronometer was invented, which allowed explorers to produce accurate maps. The Piri Reis map is drawn to such an accuracy that a chronometer or some other advanced device must have been used to draw it. So this map points to the fact that a very intelligent species was on the Earth probably at least 11,000 years ago, which is completely at odds with the history we learn at school. The next block of evidence which supports the existence of previously advanced civilizations comes from ancient monuments which are found all over the world. The Giza pyramids and Sphinx, the structures in South America and the stones of Baalbek to name but a few. You would expect that if human development had been linear, as mankind developed better techniques from let's say 5000 BC onwards, this would be reflected in the increasing complexity of the monuments. This, however, is not the case. Monuments which are believed to be the oldest often suggest levels of advanced mathematics and engineering that only the latest technology could replicate. The weight of the stones and the tolerance of manufacture suggests highly advanced civilizations existed during a period when man was supposedly a primitive barbarian. Ancient pre-Inca civilizations in South America built structures containing stones weighing 500 tons, equivalent to 500 family cars. Nobody has come up with a plausible explanation as to how these stones were moved. Legends state that the massive blocks were lifted by hand as if they were cork. Uh, the stones of Baalbek weigh approximately between 800 
and other ones still mined are under over around 2,000 tonnes. But even an 800 tonne stone, um, I mean, we've watched many recreations of movements of ancient monuments on televisions with laughter. You know, because I mean, the, the people who are supposed to rebuild the pyramids and move the stones from Stonehenge. I mean, when you watch the, the attempt to do it with the technology that they're supposed to have at the time, you know it couldn't possibly be done. Uh, the building of the Great Pyramids and the other pyramids that were built at the same time. I mean, they never tell you this. They never tell you that the, the time they built the Great Pyramid, they were also building the pyramids of the Red Pyramid and the Bent Pyramid. And these were all being lined up. And the size and the construction of the material, the stones at Baalbek, cut from a quarry, moved across uneven ground, right, in at least five to 6,000 BC, according to our scientists. And we're going to tell you they're much, much, much older than that. In fact, they're even before 10,500 BC. Those blocks of stone are impossible, were impossible to move by our technology till recently. So how did hairy barbarians using antlers move it? It's a lie. Come on, use your intelligence, use your knowledge, go look at them. Anyone who's actually been and looked at the Great Pyramid itself, the massive scale of it. I mean, somebody told us, it first wrote down, there's two and a quarter million blocks of stone. And now mathematicians are going to tell you there's over three and a half million blocks of stone. And then you can see cover-ups. They tell you the tombs for pharaohs. And then you look and find out more, nearly all the pharaohs were buried in the Valley of the Kings. And of course, why are they telling us tombs for pharaohs? Because, of course, they want to maintain the stories that's been imposed on us. Edward Leeds Skalnen was a Latvian man who in the 1920s and 30s single-handedly built Coral Castle in Florida. The castle is made of many megalithic stones, each weighing several tons. The only tool that Leeds Skalnen spoke of using was a perpetual motion holder. The stones on average weigh more than the stones found in the Great Pyramid of Egypt. The largest stone weighs 30 tons which is over three times the size of the heaviest stone found in the Great Pyramid of Giza. He was a very small man, weighing less than eight stone. He refused to allow anyone to watch him while he worked, only working at night and sleeping by day. Very few people ever got to witness him working. Some that did reported that he caused the blocks, weighing many tons, to move like hydrogen balloons. Edward Leeds Skalnen is noted as saying that he discovered the secrets of the pyramids. Perhaps Leeds Skalnen discovered an anti-gravity technology which was known to the ancients, which has since been forgotten about due to the catastrophes which engulfed the earth. The third piece of evidence of advanced civilizations is the Mayan calendar. The calendar was handed down to the Mayans from previous civilizations. It is clear from the calendar that whoever devised it had knowledge of the procession of the equinoxes and the position of the Earth in relation to both the Sun and the gravitational center of our galaxy. Whoever devised the Mayan calendar had advanced knowledge of astronomy and mathematics. The advanced civilizations of the past must have their origins somewhere. Many believe that the lost continent of Atlantis is where the advanced knowledge originated which was destroyed in a cataclysmic event along with the evidence of its history. So where is the evidence of alien intervention, other than perhaps a few strange pictures found on ancient Egyptian stonework, which some say represent a helicopter, a submarine and a spaceship, or very strange characters in this wall painting found in Italy which dates back to 10,000 BC. The controversial author Zachariah Sitchin believes he has the answer. Sitchin's theories, which are disputed by academics, are based on the translation and interpretation of stone tablets found in Sumeria, which is today known as Iraq. Sumeria is accepted as the place of one of the earliest civilizations, and from here various civilizations of the world originate. Sitchin is an expert in ancient languages and believes that the Sumerian clay tablets tell a story of how an advanced race of extraterrestrials arrived on Earth hundreds of thousands of years ago. Sitchin's theory goes like this. Facing extinction on their own home planet of Nibiru 450,000 years ago, the deposed ruler of a race known to mythology as the Anunnaki travelled to Earth. Establishing a base on Earth known as Eridu. The Anunnaki arrived in droves and began mining Earth's gold, used to restore Nibiru's failing atmosphere. 
with the help of a slave race, the human race, genetically modified from apes about 300,000 years ago. About 100,000 years ago, the Anunnaki started interbreeding with humans, as related in the Bible, leading to schisms within the various Anunnaki dynasties, who between them founded all our ancient civilizations. Then, in 2024 BC, after much feuding, nuclear war breaks out between the Anunnaki, resulting in the annihilation of the great Sumerian civilization. And um, we've spoken about the Anunnaki. Um, could you tell us what you believe the Anunnaki are and um, just give us a broad outline as to when they first came to the Earth? Well, um, I've written quite a lot of information about the Anunnaki. I've studied it in great depth. Um, the Anunnaki, Anu, Anunnaki, Anunnaki. You've been shown this in many TV points and programs. The Anunnaki are the people who visited this planet. The first arrival on this planet were about 415,000 years ago. And they visited this planet and wanted the materials and minerals of it. So they came down and stayed on this planet for a considerable period of time. The remnants of their earlier civilizations, which were far more technologically advanced coming from different planets, to travel to here are still all over the planet. The only material that lasts a considerable period of time, of course, is stone. It's the only thing that vibrates to the vibrations of the earth. And when you look around and see what's, what's available, you can see that the destruction of everything else, material, metals, all disappear. Really, anything that lasts more than 20,000 years is basically only precious metals, jade, few bones, pottery, and stone. And to look at the gigantic stone monuments that are around today of a technology far in advance of ours opens your mind. We're not talking of, of theory. Go have a look at the base of Baalbek in the Lebanon. Now, this city, according to certain reports, is dated by our scientists who don't want to, who have got vested interests who make it so they only are allowed to give out the information that the people who control them allow them. Uh, many honourable scientists will tell you this quietly, but will not sit in front of a camera and tell you.